Hello guys, welcome to this new random coding session. The goal of random coding sessions is to share with the world those moments when I stumble upon something really wholesome while coding, something advanced or remarkable. So I have this feeling that I want to share with the world. Actually, it's all session while I'm working on my project. So today I want to share with you something I think that it's really cool. We want to explore a fascinating aspect of web development have you ever wondered how certain websites sometimes adapt their language based on the visitor's location automatically? And you don't need to wonder, it's just a, a mechanism that get the IP from the customer and process it to show the uh, updated language on the website. I want to show you this is implementation in my Next.js project. Actually, we have to understand that beneath the surface lies a special mechanism that uh, extracts the user IP address from their request, first of all. Identifies the uh, geogra geographic region associate associated with that IP, and then it uh, adjusts uh, the website language accordingly. So it's a powerful, of course, that can enhance the user experience uh, a lot. In this tutorial, I will show you through the integration of this mechanism in this Next.js project. So, Let's explore the process. First of all, we have a client re request. When a client makes a request to your website, their request headers contain IP. So the second step is the IP extraction. So Next.js uh, middleware comes into play. Extract the client's IP address from these request headers. There is also a backend interaction. So the, the middleware set the extract IP address as a cookie for the further use. Next, the front-end cookies retrieval. So on the front-end, I retrieve the user IP address from the stored cookie. There is then a third part API call, API call to determine the user country based on the IP address. So we invoke a server function that interacts with the third-party API. And then, as a last step, there is a page re-rendering. Once the country information is obtained, I dynamically re-render the page ensuring that the appropriate language and content are displayed to the user. Let's dive into the, the coding so we can see how to implement. Okay, this is my website that I'm trying to update and put more cool stuff here. I'm working also on Parallax and actually I want to use my website to learn something new and always experiment something interesting. I'm opening the website from Italy, so DP is from Italy, and to check if the if the mechanics work, I would like to show the country here. Maybe we can modify this. We can modify instead of transform, we can put the C. Okay, we can use this one. Okay, I will put the variable that is in Redux store that is called length. So in this way, we will get the directly the, okay, IT. Perfect, but so the question is how I can get this final information to after I get it, I can update all the website with the proper language. Okay, first of all, let's start from the first step is the client request. How I can extract the IP from the customer. Okay, in this component that actually is the page, is the home page, I I include this function use user IP that I import from this folder. Let's open it. User IP from Utils. I use, oh, where is it? Remember, okay, it's here. First of all, I, I use this function. What it's doing actually is getting the user IP from the cookies. But before this function, somebody have to write the IP on the cookies. So which is the function, which is the mechanism that write on the cookies the IP before I call it with this function. Actually, it's the middleware that we can find here. Uh, if somebody doesn't know what is a middleware, actually it's, it's a set of function or code that runs during the server-side rendering. So it's, it's running server-side before a page is generated and served to the client. So middleware actually are just functions that are used to perform tasks like authentication, data fetching, modify request or response and more. Actually, they 
as the name suggests, they sit between the incoming HTTP request and the page rendering process, so allowing you to intercept and manipulate data, in this case, the IP from the client and the, the behavior before the page is rendered. Let's see our middleware. It's quite simple. It always works with next request and next response. It's just the object that include all the information about the request and how to modify the response. In this case, we don't interact with the response, but we just set the cookies. So we get the we get the request. From the request, I get the headers and I get exactly the attribute X for word or for. I ex explain you now how to get it. Sometimes you have to check the in which server you implement, you deploy your application to be sure that the server give you back this important information. This is uh, actually the IP. When we get the IP, we set on the cookies with the attribute user IP. So at this point, I set the cookies and I can get this value from the function that we saw before. So if we go chronologically to the request, we have the page that first render, okay? When I first render, so in this case, I first render the page, activate the middleware on the server, the middleware get the IP, it's set to the cookies, and if we open the cookies, we can see there is the, the IP directly. Uh, I get the IP always on the first render with this function on the front end. So I use user IP. There is the function that we saw before that we open again just to check it better. So is it utils is here. So this function actually use is just a use effect that get the user IP and give back to, to, to my function as a return. I get this IP on the first render and when the page finished to render, it activate the use effect. Okay, it activate use effect and the function inside use effect. So what we need now, now we need to get the country from the IP. And to get the country, we need a third part API. I found a free API. I will show you where that you send the IP number and they will give you back the code of the country. This is a server function for people that doesn't know what is a server function is a special feature of Next.js and it can provide several benefits in certain scenarios like server side data fetching actually allow you to perform data fetching and processing on the server side ra rather than relying solely on the client side's JavaScript. So it's more safe, it's protected inside the server and it's faster. It doesn't overload the, the, the client browser. This can improve performance and security by reducing the amount of data transferred to the client and ensure, ensuring sensitive data remains on the server. I really love server function from Next.js. They are a really incredible tools and it's still experimental in Next.js, but it works so good and make you the chance to create safe uh, application and fast and uh, uh, maintain all the complexity of the uh, function in the server. Of course, the, it can be used only uh, for the function that doesn't need the, any browser data or interact dynamically with the page. This is a, a server function we, we just import from this from this folder server function every api request let's find it is here we can find here already open and uh, this is the function okay to you just a note to use the server function you have to declare that is your server this declaration tell to next.js to consider to running only on the server side and if it's not it's running on the server side give you an error in this case is server side this is a normal function, it's always a sync because I have to retrieve data from this API. Okay, this is the API I told you before, it's free and it's really fast. So you just retrieve to, to this get request from ipapi.com and give you back a JSON. And if you don't have the IP, it will give you, yeah, it get out. If you don't specify the IP, it will get automatically your IP. Or you can put IP as ending of the path. So it's hello, you are from Italy. Actually, Monte Cosaro is a really small city near here. So it's precise, I think. 50 kilometers error, we can accept. And it gives you also the coordinate and other information, also the provider. It's really interesting and it's free. First of all, it's free. 
that's okay. So we give back this uh, the information that we need in this case is the, the country code. So our final goal is, is to set the website with the language of the client. So we need the country code. It gives me back the country code from the IP. So now we go back to the homepage. So use effect uh, when I finish to render, it activate this uh, server function is a promise, so it wait to finish the retrieval of the information. That's why it's a, a sync in the other side. When the promise is done, then we get the result is exactly the IP as we specify here. Wait, we use a sync await. I, I think I hope that you know what is a sync away because it's really important in Node.js. It's another way, it's a simpler way to to use to use a synchronous operation and it replaces the old system with promises. So I think we wait, it makes the call. We wait that uh, give back the information. When the information is back, I, uh, I assign this variable. If this variable is okay, uh, if it's not okay, I give error. If it's not, I will return the function with the data, okay? So the, the data is back inside this, this variable. And after we can create all the logic that we want when we re-render the page, if we get the country, we can assign this the country with the, all the variable in the page, then give me back the information. I activate this patch. This is a Redux feature that update a variable, okay, update the, the variable language and re-render the page or re-render the component that use this variable with the use selector. So uh, this is really important in Redux and it's really powerful because for the one that know what is re Redux is a way to manage the states and the rendering of a page, not only following the tree of the React DOM, but also connecting uh, elements that are not, that doesn't follow the, the logic of the tree. You can check on my channel and you can find specific tutorial about Redux and how powerful is this tool. Anyway, I update this, this variable and this variable is an update language that actually is going to update this state inside my Redux store. That is global slice we can find here. So this function update language will update the variable length, the global variable length. So from default English, I put English as a default because many users use English language. So I render the page in English as a default. And after if the language is different, I will re-render again. So in this case, we'll up, update this variable, for example, and end to another code, another country code. And when I update this automatically, it triggered the rendering of the whole page. Okay. And in this case, we are going to show on the page that the new country that is not IT. Now we will see how it changed directly to this part, to this information, to this text. So, for example, I want to, let's connect to another country. We can use a, a VPN. I want to connect, for example, in Germany. Let's connect. Good, we are from Germany now. We are German. So if I update the page, here we go. We get, we get DE that is German. So this is a, a good way to, to integrate sort of internationalization in your NextJX. So it is a good way to improve the user experience of your website. One important thing that we mentioned before, please be sure that your host give you back the IP from the customer. For example, I'm using AWS with an AC2. This is integrated in an AC2. And as a default, doesn't give you back this information on the headers. So. If we are back here in the middleware, where is the middleware is here. How to activate it? First of all, you have to activate the load balancer. You have to integrate the load balancer to your instance. It's really important after you set everything as, your, as you want to allow the AC2 to give you back these headers, this information, the IP, cast the IP from the client. You have to go to attribute edit after you create the load balancer. Remember to activate this X forward for either. You have to set append, okay? Because as a default, 
is uh, preserved. You have to put a pen and in this way, EC2 will give you back IP customers and on the eaters. So here you can see how the mechanisms work. Actually, I implement on my website to change the image in this slide from Italian to English, depending on the country from the customer. Actually, if it's the customers from Italy, you show me all Italian images. But if the customer is from other country outside Italy, show me just English. So now the IP is in Italy, so I can see the Italian content. If I change and I connect, for example, from England, United Kingdom, I update. And yeah, here we go. Re-rendering. This one is always in English, but if we go to the image, uh, voila. We have reached the end of this video tutorial, and I genuinely hope you have enjoyed its content. If it has been helpful to you, please show your support by liking the video and sharing it with your friends on social media. If you haven't already, I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on upcoming lessons. Don't forget to check out my website, thevergolabs.com, where you will find a plethora of interesting programming content. You can also send me collaboration requests and explore all the programming services we offer. Your participation and support are crucial in my growing and to grow this community and providing you with even more valuable resources. Thank you for the bottom of my heart for being here with us and I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.